Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hepatopathology course. So we had already discussed the normal liver histology. We will now move forward to the different patterns of liver injury. The patterns of liver injury can be broadly categorized as a hepatic pattern which involves inflammation of the portal tract and damage to the hepatocytes and it includes viral or autoimmune hepatitis. A steatotic pattern which involves the accumulation of fat within the liver cells and it includes non-alcoholic or alcoholic steatohepatitis. A cholestatic pattern which involves the accumulation of bile within the liver and it could be cholestatic or secondary to a bile duct pathology wherein it is called biliary pathology. The fourth is the vascular pattern which is a pathology of either the inflow or outflow tract and the fifth one is a mixed pattern which could be a combination of any of these patterns and that is usually seen with drug induced liver injury. So whenever we are assessing a liver biopsy slide, we should see it first in the low bar and in this particular low bar, we should be able to make out whether it is a lobule predominant pathology or a portal predominant pathology or both. So in a lobule predominant pathology, the portal tract remains relatively quiet and the major pathology lies within the lobule. Whereas in a portal predominant pathology, the problem lies predominantly within the portal tract. So as we see here, in this particular case, there is lot of expansion of the portal tract where, whereas changes within the lobules are not that much significant. So this is a portal predominant pathology. Now the different patterns that we discussed is the hepatic pattern. As we said, then in hepatic pattern, there will be a lot of inflammation in the portal tract and then which is accompanied by damage to the surrounding hepatocytes. A steatotic pattern is characterized by accumulation of fat within the liver cells and initially the fat will be smaller vacuoles and gradually they will enlarge and start damaging the hepatocytes. A cholesterotic pattern is characterized by accumulation of greenish colored bile within the hepatocytes. So the first is the hepatic pattern. In this as we said it includes primarily the viral hepatitis and the autoimmune hepatitis. The viral hepatitis could be caused by a number of hepatotropic viruses like hepatitis A, hepatitis B, C, delta virus, hepatitis E virus and the autoimmune hepatitis is caused by formation of antibodies within the system. So uh, in some of the viral hepatitis like hepatitis C virus, we see the presence of lymphoid aggregates within the portal tract as it is seen here. And in hepatitis B virus, there is presence of ground glass hepatocytes. Now these ground glass hepatocytes are different from the normal hepatocytes as seen in the left panel. So as compared to the normal hepatocytes which have a rarefied cytoplasm, these ground glass hepatocytes have a eosinophilic glassy cytoplasm. So there will be glassy eosinophilic cytoplasm and this cytoplasm is because of accumulation of hepatitis B surface antigen and which you can also see on while doing an orsine stain or a Victoria Bloom stain. So this is a feature of hepatitis B surface antigen and hepatitis B viral infection which you can sometimes found on your biopsy. Now the second one is an autoimmune hepatitis. In an autoimmune hepatitis the degree of infiltrate within the portal tract comprises of mainly lymphocytes and plasma cells. Now the percentage of plasma cells in autoimmune hepatitis is relatively more as compared to other forms of hepatitis and this is because in uh, non-autoimmune injury there is a lot of anti body secretion so there will, the proportion of plasma cells will be relatively higher as compared to other cells. So similarly for autoimmune hepatitis we see a mixture of lymphocytes and plasma cells and with occasional eosinophils within the portal tract and these lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate they will breach the limiting plate and they will start damaging the hepatocytes which are present at the interface. So this is called interface hepatitis or also called piecemeal necrosis. So for the histological evidence of autoimmune hepatitis even in the absence of serological features or serological testing the degree of lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate and interface should be of at least moderate intensity in most of the portal tracts. Then in addition to these lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate and interface activity there are also presence of several hepatocellular rosettes which are defined as there will be just rounding of 3-4 hepatocytes which form a flower like structure and they generally do not have any lumen. If you see a lumen these are another types of rosettes which are called cholestatic rosettes which are generally not found in autoimmune hepatitis and they will have bile in the center. So this is hepatocyte rosettes without any lumen and this is just the rounding of the hepatocytes and they, they may represent some regenerative changes secondary to the damage at the interface. Now, another feature of autoimmune hepatitis is empiripolysis, 
wherein the hepatocytes engulf the lymphocytes and plasma cells and which are also usually seen at the interface now the fibrosis and chronic hepatitis now the fibrosis and chronic hepatitis starts from the portal region so it is called a photocentric type of a fibrosis this is because the inflammation also starts from the portal region and gradually when the inflammation damages the hepatocyte the fibrosis sets in and it which also starts from the portal region the staging of the chronic hepatitis has been given by different authors like ishak sital by modern it was later modified modified ishak sital you have metavid staging you have bat and rutwig staging you can follow any of the staging system provided you mention in your report what staging system you are using so as per metavid he has divided the fibrosis into four stage that is f1 f2 f3 and f4 and in the f1 there are thin fibrous septa in few of the portal tract F2 has fibrous septa in most of the portal tract and F3 has bridging fibrosis multiple bridges are there and F4 is classified by the formation of cirrhosis So what are the indications of bio doing a biopsy in a hepatic in a hepatitis So first is it is never most of the time it is never done for the diagnosis of viral hepatitis but it is rather done for the assessment of fibrosis or the assessment of necroinflammation which occurs secondary to a viral hepatitis So the serological test for hepatitis B and C are relatively fair enough for diagnosing these hepatitis. So they are basically done to see for necroinflammation activity and the degree of fibrosis. Second uh, category is when the trans when there is transaminitis but when patient has normal viral markers and ANA is negative. So if his viral markers and ANA is negative and he is having a detailed liver function test, a liver biopsy is done to look for the etiology of this. The third one is an ANA positive without any significant transaminitis. So suppose a patient is having an autoantibody levels of more than one is to three fifty or so, and he is not having significant transaminitis. A liver biopsy may still be performed to look for the degree of necroinflammation within the liver. The second is a steatotic pattern. So in this steatotic pattern, it could be non-alcoholic and alcoholic state of hepatitis. The major difference between a non-alcoholic and an alcoholic is alcoholics show a mixture of few of the things like not just steatosis. It will be a combination of cholestasis. There will be numerous medullary dying bodies. There will be neutrophilic satellitosis, which is defined as presence of numerous polymorphs in the vicinity of the hepatocytes. Whereas if we see for non-alcoholic, you will only see steatosis most of the times, which is accompanied by ballooning degeneration, and in the later stages by the perisinusoidal fibrosis. So this is a case of non-alcoholic state of hepatitis showing macrovesicular steatosis of moderate degree, and in addition there will be some foci of tubular inflammation. Whereas this for the alcoholic hepatitis, you could see numerous medullary dying bodies, which are accompanied by fair number of polymorphs. In the lower panel, we could see the neutrophilic satellitosis, which is defined as aggregates of polymorphs which are seen in the vicinity of the hepatocytes. So, why these polymorphs come and sit in next to the hepatocytes? We see that there are some lipopolysaccharides in an alcoholic patient, which are absorbed through the gut, and they are expressed on the surface of these hepatocytes. And these lipopolysaccharides are chemotactic for the polymorphs. So, gradually they will build in polymorphs around them, and this is called neutrophilic satellitosis. now fibrosis as we said for the chronic hepatitis it is a portocentric type of a fibrosis which starts from the portal region so the staging system for the non alcoholic state of hepatitis it is different from that of chronic viral hepatitis because in a non alcoholic state of hepatitis the fibrosis starts from the central region it is generally do not start from the portal region so that is why the staging of non alcoholic is also different from the chronic viral hepatitis and it has been staged as per nash cyrn staging as stage 1 wherein you see only peri um, this peri perivenular fibrosis or periportal fibrosis stage 2 is when you see both periportal and perivenular fibrosis stage 3 is when there are multiple bridges and 4 when there is formation of cirrhosis So, what are the indications of biopsy in a non-alcoholic state of hepatitis? So, this is generally done when patient is having transaminitis with fatty liver on ultrasound. So, patient is having an ultrasound uh, fatty liver, and then you want to know that this damage is because of non-alcoholic state of hepatitis. And NASH is always a biopsy diagnosis. For alcohol, they uh, they are doing a biopsy to tell for the degree of necroinflammation. Now, the criteria for diagnosing NASH on biopsies. either you see macro uh, this macrovesicular or microvesicular steatosis together with ballooning degeneration 
और स्टीटोसिस विद पेरीसाइनोफाइडल फाइब्रोसिस और एन एन एफ एल डी एक्टिविटी स्कोर दैट इज इन स्कोर इज इक्वल टू मोर देन फाइव सो इन एनी ऑफ दीज कैटेगरीज यू कैन डायग्नोज द केस इज नैश विल बी डिस्कसिंग दिस इन मोर डिटेल्स एंड विल गो टू सेपरेट टॉपिक्स ऑन नैश द थर्ड पैटर्न इज अ कोलेस्टेटिक इंजरी Now, in a cholestatic injury, it is characterized by accumulation of bile within the liver. The first cholestasis, cholestasis could be seen within the hepatocytes or it could be seen within the canalicula. So, biopsy is going to show you only cholestasis and ductilar bile plugs, bile leaks, and these are usually seen in sepsis or in the case of drug-induced liver injury. Then, second is the biliary pathology. Biliary pathology is when you can pinpoint the etiology of cholestasis as a bile duct pathology, and they are seen in cases of primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, or idiopathic adulthood ductopenia. In the biliary pathology, the biopsy will show features of cholestasis, that is cellular and canalicular. Then, in addition, there will be cholate stasis. Now, this cholate stasis is caused by the accumulation of bile acids within the hepatocytes, and it is usually seen in the periportal region. And since the bile acids are colorless, so they do we do not see a greenish stain in these hepatocytes. So they will be just enlarged, and they look as if there is some hydrophobic degeneration or ballooning degeneration of the hepatocyte. Then there will also be copper associated proteins which are seen on orthenous stain, and in addition there will be features of bile duct damage. And for PVC, it will be a non-separative granulomatous destruction of the bile duct. For primary sclerosing cholangitis, there will be onion skin fibrosis or concentric fibrosis of the bile duct. So in this, we will see the uh, this is showing a biliary pathology and a cholestatic pathology. Now we see a ductocentric granuloma in this, in which we see a duct and which is surrounded by aggregates of epithelial histiocytes in the vicinity of the duct. So this is a non-separative granulomatous destruction of the bile duct. And if we see this kind of a lesion, we can say that this cholestasis is because of biliary pathology. And this is a cholestasis cholestatic pathology showing accumulation of bile within the hepatocytes, which is called cellular cholestasis, or there could be accumulation of bile within the canaliculi, which is called canalicular. cholestasis then the fourth pattern is sinusoidal congestion and injury that is the vascular pathology so whenever there is blockage of any major veins which are major hepatic veins in over here then this is going this is called bud carry syndrome and this will lead to pooling of blood within the hepatocytes so subsequently what will happen is most of the sinusoids will be dilated and they will show the atrophy of the surrounding hepatocytes plate whereas in this particular slide if you see the hepatocytes which are next to the portal tract they are relatively of okay size whereas if you go towards the perivenular region most of the cords of the hepatocytes are atrophic and they become atrophic because of the dilatation of the sinusoids which are congested so that is secondary effect of a vascular pathology Another vascular pathology is the nodular regenerative hyperplasia. It usually occurs because of vascular remodeling. So generally, the liver is non-cirrhotic, whereas on ultrasound, if you see, they will see some nodular architecture of the liver. However, if you do a biopsy, the liver will fall short of cirrhosis and it will show formation of these regenerative nodules. So these are the uh, it will show the formation of regenerating hepatocyte cords, which are surrounded by atrophic hepatocyte cords. And this is best delineated on a reticular stain. So retic is best on showing a or showing the nodular regenerative hyperplasia. Then the mixed pattern. So the mixed pattern is caused by uh, it could be caused by any of these patterns. So you could have hepatic, cholestatic, steatotic pattern. And in addition, if you are seeing a fair number of eosinophils also, then this is usually seen in the drug-induced liver injury. So that is all about the patterns of liver injury. The points to remember are. Assess the biopsy first in the low part to identify the predominant area involved. So by seeing the biopsy in low part, we should be able to tell out whether it is a lobal predominant or it is a portal predominant pathology. Once we have identified the predominant area involved, then we should be able to tell about the pattern of injury. So what injury is causing that particular area involvement? So whether it is a steatotic, hepatic, or it is a cholestatic pathology, then we have to look in high part all the portal tracts and the lobules for any additional features. And in the absence of definite etiological pointers which are found on the biopsy, the diagnosis can still be given based on the pattern uh, diagnosis. For example, if there is no etiological pointers of cholestasis, we can just say that the biopsy is showing a cholestatic pathology. So that is all for the patterns of liver injury. Thank you very much.